In this making of video, we're going to demonstrate how you can use the Field Grass and Plants library by the 3D Garden to quickly create impressive environments. This library includes 75 plants and 24 presets, all designed to integrate with Forest Pack to easily create fantastic environments in very little time. So this tutorial is a making of for a scene created by the 3D Garden team. So we won't be showing every little step. Also, to save time, the tutorial starts with the bare bones already in place. For example, there's a small house already in the midground, there's a concrete slab path, several raised beds, and a terrain to fill in the background of the shop. We're also starting with several splines already in place to define the planting areas, since we're sure you probably don't want to watch us draw a bunch of lines. So let's add plants in the easiest way possible, using presets. So presets are the simplest way to use Forest Pack. All the hard work has already been done for you. And all that you need to do is to pick the style you like from the library and tell it where to scatter. To illustrate how presets work, we'll use a grass preset to cover the large area in the foreground of the image. There are two ways to select a preset, either before or after you've created a forest object. So to start by picking the preset first, you'd go to the Create panel and find the Geometry i2 software group. Select Forest Pack and then press the Library Select button to open the library browser. Now you can find the models or the preset that you want to scatter. So the library we're looking at today is split into two folders, one for individual plants, which is called models, and a second that includes 24 presets. So in this scene, we'll start with the common grass preset. Select it and click Import Selected. Now select a spline or surface from the scene. And that's it. Once it's loaded, the preset is now scattered inside the spline. So if you created this by picking a spline, but you also want to scatter it on an uneven terrain, you may also need to go into the surfaces rollout and add the terrain to the surface list. And after you've done this, you can now continue to add areas as required. Here, for example, we're adding some spline areas that surround these raised beds. By setting these spline areas to exclude, we remove the grass. We also added the area to the front left-hand side of the path. And as you can see, very quickly, we're able to populate this whole area with ground cover. Now we'll use another preset to fill in the other side of the path. This time we'll demonstrate how to select a preset after the forest pack object has already been created. So go to the Create panel and find the Geometry i2 software group again. Select Forest Pack. If you right click on the Library Select button, it ensures that no items that were previously selected in the library are going to be used. Then we'll click to select a spline or a surface from the scene. Here I'm selecting a spline to the left of the house. So we also removed items from around the raised beds on this side. Again, we're going to add the existing spline and set the mode to exclude. Now let's load a preset. Open the library browser from the geometry rollout. Select a preset and then click import selected. And it's done. As you can see, using presets is straightforward. And of course, if you want to swap a preset, you can do so at any time by simply loading another from the library. All the new assets in the settings will be imported, replacing the existing. The areas, however, are retained, so there's no need to update them again. In that way, you can switch between different presets to get the look you desire. Also, remember these presets can be used as a starting point, so you can easily go in and edit any of the attributes you want. For example, I'm going to remove some of the items being scattered, so I'm only left with one type of grass. Several other presets are used in this scene. For example, the raised beds each use a different preset. And the only difference was that this time, instead of selecting a spline, we selected the surface that defines the top of the bed. To avoid repetition though, I'm not going to show each one of these being created. So it's worth mentioning at this point that some of the presets have been designed to work as an overlay. You can generally tell these by the amount of space between the plants. These types of presets, overlay presets, work great when they're added as a new layer on top of another forest pack object. In that way, you can build up really nice grass mixes while retaining a high level of control. To demonstrate, in this scene, we'll add some taller grass varieties to the right of this building. The process, though, is more or less the same. So you create a new forest pack object by clicking a spline in the scene, open the library browser, and then select one of these overlay presets. 
and that's it. When you combine this with the existing grass in the scene, you'll get a much more convincing mixture of species. Now, of course, sometimes instead of using a preset, you might want to create a custom mix of plants. So to do that with this library, you'd create a new forest pack object. This time I'm going to create it by picking the terrain. Then open the library browser. And now we'll go to the field grasses and plants models library as opposed to presets. And in here, you're going to find 75 individual plant models in 15 species that you can use to create your own bespoke scatters. So pick the assets you want to use. Hold down control while you click to select multiple items. And when you're done, click import selected. Next, go to the transform rollout and enable scale and rotation randomization. Change any settings as desired. For example, here we slightly widened the range of the scale randomization. Next, we set the density. So go to the distribution rollout and pick a scatter pattern. Decrease the density settings to increase the number of items scattered. But remember, Forest can limit the number of items previewed in the viewports to prevent unwanted crashes. The number of items that can be shown is set in the display rollout. It doesn't affect the number of items rendered, only what's displayed in the viewports. And setting this value to zero removes the limitation completely, but do use that with caution. So, so far, so good. But the grass is scattered on the entire terrain. In this example, we will use the brush tools to paint these plants precisely where they're wanted. To use this tool, go to the areas rollout, disable the surface area so all the plants disappear, then add a new paint area. Click on the paintbrush button and then draw on the terrain to place items. If it's a little bit small to increase the size of your brush, open the painter options and increase the maximum size. Sometimes you might want to see more clearly which models are being scattered. One way to do that is by tinting the points cloud or the proxy using the item's color ID. So to do this, first give each model, or each group of models in this case, a distinct color. Here I'm grouping them using red and blue. Next you'd go to the display rollout in enable use color ID. This makes it much easier to see what's going on with your scatter. For example, we can now visualize the effect of changing the item's probabilities much more easily. While we're here, we'll just demonstrate another handy but often overlooked feature of include areas. When you have multiple models like we have here, it's actually possible to select which items are scattered per area. For example, if I only wanted to scatter one species in this area at the front here, I could do that by turning on select models, then clicking on pick to open the select items dialog. And then all you do is check the items you wish to display in this area. All the others are not shown. And to continue this example, we could then add another paint area, enable select models and choose the other species. In that way, I can now paint two different species exactly where I want them using just one forest object. It's pretty useful. So moving on, just for fun, we wanted to demonstrate how this rock face in the background was created using Rail Clone, combined with Forest Pack to add some grass to the ridge. This part of the scene uses several rock assemblies from Quixel's Megascans collections. Here they've been rotated into a vertical position and placed at their tops more or less align. We then reset the X-forms and set all the pivots to a common point on the Z-axis. We've also combined all the materials into a multi sub object material and we've reassigned the IDs accordingly to make sure that when it's applied to the rail clone object, the correct materials are assigned. Okay, so we can now use rail clone to deform these assets to follow the spline. And here's how we did it. First, create a new rail clone object. Open the graph editor and add a segment node. Right click on the segment node and select clone multiple. Pick the five or six rock assemblies from the scene and import them. So if we randomize these, we might get immediate repetition where the same segment appears uh, next to each other twice. So to avoid that here, and because it's a short run, I'm going to put them for a sequence operator instead. This will create a simple repeating pattern along the spline. Next, we'll create an L1S generator via the sequence operator 
to its default input. Then we'll create a spline node. Wire it to the generator spline input and select a path from the scene. These rocks will now deform along the path, but we need to adjust the pivots and overlap them. Instead of doing this for each segment node, which will take a bit of time, we can do it using a transform node after the se sequence operator. This allows us to make changes to all the items in one place. So first of all, to overlap the geometry, we enabled padding and use a negative value. Then we enable alignment and change the Y and Z axis to use the pivots we set up a little earlier. And then finally add the material. And there's our rock face done. Now, we want to hide the top of this ridge a little bit by scattering some grass on it with forest pack. And that's no problem. All we need to do though is to make sure that to disable Rail Clone's instancing engine. In this case, it won't make any difference anyway since the geometry is being deformed to follow the spline and therefore no instancing was ever going to take place. So now we've got Rail Clone set up and we can scatter on it, we'll demonstrate how to add the grass to the top using Forest Pack. And for this, I'm going to use uh, an existing grass Forest Pack object. I'm going to go to the surface rollout in Forest Pack. I'm going to add the Rail Clone object to the surface list. And as you can see, now our items are scattered on the entire cliff face. But we can limit this in a couple of ways. First of all, using slope angle, which will allow you to stop the grass growing on areas that are too steep. And secondly, by altitude, so we can have the grass growing only on top of the rocky outcrop. And a final setting you might want to look at here is the normal slider. Moving this to the center will cause the grass to align to the surface's normals instead of pointing straight upwards. Great, so far so good. So for our final demonstration, we're going to take a look at the grass growing between the concrete slabs. To achieve this, we created a new forest object using the common grass field preset. We used a spline that encloses the path to define the area for the scatter. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the grass is much too large. Now, as I mentioned before, these presets are a great starting point, but they can always be modified to suit your project. In this case, we just decreased the size using the global scale parameter found in the geometry rollout. And then to compensate for the smaller size, we also needed to adjust the distribution settings by changing the density. So the size is now right, but obviously it's going growing through the path. So we can remove it from under the slabs. And to do that, we'll add an object area. Click on the button to add one and then pick the slab geometry from the scene. So a lot of the grass has been removed, but it's not working great. There are some patches missing and that kind of thing. So um, just to explain, this works by creating a black and white map projected along the world's Z axis. And by default, as you can see here, this map's resolution is 512 pixels, which explains the inaccuracies over this, which is quite a big area. So by increasing this value, you'll be able to improve the accuracy of the collision detection and you'll get more grass where you need it. And then finally, there are some stray plants on the sides of the path and to get rid of those, we can add a little bit of density fall off uh, for the include areas. So the last thing we did to wrap this scene up was to add some trees from the 3D Garden European Common Trees collection to fill in the background. And that pretty much wraps up this making of. We hope you can see how easy it is to use the Field Grasses and Plants collection from the 3D Garden to quickly bring scenes to life. If you'd like to download a free sample from this or any of our other collections, please visit the i2 software website. And if you have any questions about this tutorial, our plugins or the 3D Garden collections, please let us know in the forum.